Playbook, the place to find a sports coach or mentor. All sports, all ages, all abilities. It's about you playing to your potential, whatever level that is. Visit playbook.coach to find a coach. Playbook is also the place to sign up as a coach if you have sporting expertise and you're keen to share that with others through coaching and mentoring. Everyone is welcome to coach. It's super flexible. You set your own prices, locations, and schedule. Head to playbook.coach to sign up. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Ads and Dunks podcast. As always, brought to you by Oz American Aces and our uh, our friends at Playbook, who have uh, been looking after us these last couple of weeks and got a couple more episodes with them. We love our friends out at Playbook. Um, thanks for looking after us, as I've just mentioned. Uh, my name's Adzi, and of course, with me as always, Joshy Dunkley. How are we going, mate? I'm good, thanks, mate. It's a bit weird seeing you online as we've been able to catch up over the last few days. It's been good um, having you up in Brizzy, but it's been nice. Good little weekend and great to see you as always. Thanks, mate. And sorry I've, sorry for being rude. I, uh, I usually say my best mate, Joshy Dunkley, and I didn't say that. So <laughs> welcome, welcome, my best mate, Joshy Dunkley, on the other end. Um, yeah, you're right. Uh, it was a nice weekend. I literally just flew in uh, today, um, caught up yesterday for breakfast, but um we got a little bit of airtime, uh, you and I, over the uh, weekend, the Channel 7 AFL and, and whatnot. It was pretty funny. Mate, you, I got it. I didn't get any airtime. You got the airtime. I was out there playing in the first quarter, and here I look up at the screen to just have a look at the time that I'm running off the field, and I see your big head on the screen. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell is going on here? Surely you had a little giggle to yourself. Of course I did. I did. I was, <laughs> Mate, I reckon if you got vision, you could probably see me look up at the screen. There was a stoppage on the center wing, the time that it happened. We'll see if Brado can find it. And I look up at the screen, I sort of look down and I'm like sort of half laughing to myself. I was like, oh, this is gold. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I actually didn't realize I was on the screen until my phone actually blew up. I had um, Kimmy was messed because she was sitting up above with Lazi and Tipper um, yep. and a couple other people went. I was like, oh, well, here we go. And then obviously 7 AFL posted it and whatnot. But um, no, it was nice. Nice to get a little bit of airtime. It took away uh, <laughs> the great night as it was for you and all the attention was on me, which is great. Nah, it, it always is, mate. We all know that. You know, whenever it's you and me, you're always getting the airtime, and I'm just the one that's uh, the reason for you being there. <laughs> I'm laughing because uh, a lot of it's true, but um, no. It, uh, <laughs> out, outside of that, it was a great weekend. I was able to um, obviously get up there on Friday, and fantasy football was back as we've spoken about. And there's a game on Friday, which was which is great to watch. Was able to go watch Kaiser play as well, which is another. Uh, Another fun thing I did, watch him uh, win, who they play? Williamstown. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah, we always get Williamstown Werribee incorrect. They play, they uh, beat Williamstown out at your facility. Your facility is unbelievable. An elite facility. Mm. Yeah, it is good. I mean, it's hard to really explain because it's, and it probably hard to show people too because it's a little bit out of the city. But once you're out there, it's incredible, mate. Like the, <laughs> it's world class, some of the stuff that we've got access to and not only the, the club itself, but just around the corner. Well, literally a hundred meter walk down the road is a massive recovery center. So we get full access to it all and very fortunate to have the the quality set up we do. Yeah, no, I thought the same. It was unbelievable. And as I said, was able to watch Kaiser win and had a couple of beers with the old man and your uncle, which was nice. Um, and then yeah, ventured out to been... the Gabba and, uh, and watched you play, which was um, pretty much my whole weekend. Well, actually did that and then went to movie world on Sunday with, um, with Georgie. But, uh, I don't know who was more scared to go on the rides, Georgie or me. So um, I didn't go on any rides, and uh, Georgie t- put me on the um, the merry-go-round. And I know Kim put a video up. It was pretty funny because I had to awkwardly stand there, pretending <laughs> I was there protecting her. But um, yeah, it was uh, pretty funny. It was a it was a very nice weekend. I was gonna say you did go on a ride because I saw a video that Kim put up, and you're just standing there holding this pole. And Georgie's going up and down like on this little horse thing and you're just like, how good is this? <laughs> <laughs> so awkward. Yeah, it was funny because Georgie was telling me, um, and if you didn't see the video, which I don't think many people did, it's really, really slow. I mean, like you're not even, the merry-go-round's moving, but you're not even moving on the on the ride and you're standing up there. And if you're, if you're shorter than what they require, you have to go stand with your child and I guess – Pretend you're holding him, but Georgie, being Georgie, she's so stubborn and you know wanting to do everything by herself sometimes. And she didn't want me to stand there and hold her, so I had to act like, for safety reasons, that I had to stand there and 
look after her when I was thinking, what am I even doing? Georgie could just sit here by herself and and do this all alone. So yeah, it was um it was quite funny. Have you been to Movie World at all since you've been living up in Queensland? Nah, nah I haven't been to Movie World. Tipper and I went to Wet and Wild. I think it was Wet and Wild. Yeah, it was Wet and Wild last year. Like when we first came up here, or when I first came up here, um, went to Wet and Wild for a day. That was good fun. But I want to do them all. I want to go and do like you know Sea World and. Uh, White Water World and Ooh. Dream World and Movie World, like all of them, just go and get a full pass. So, might do that this weekend, mate, because we got the weekend off, maybe. And you, you would probably get the um, VIP pass, wouldn't you? Where you skip all the lines and you just go straight to the front. And don't worry about. You're one of those guys where, at the front of the rides, right, usually has a a time wait. So, like for instance, on the weekend, um, there was the giant, not the giant drop, is there one at Movie World where it goes up and down real quick, thirty minute wait, but there's a fast lane. So you'd probably be that guy that would go on the fast lane, go on the ride like four times and see the person who was waiting in the 30-minute line finally get to the front and you would have already been like four times. Well, you pay extra to do that. So, yeah, I probably I probably would pay extra to get that benefit. But th- at the same time, I'd probably go on a day that wasn't so busy. So I'd be looking at, you know, midweek, a day True. that is – so that would be my first tactic. But then if I went there and it was busy, then yeah, hopefully. Um, or ma- or maybe pay. go super early. Speaking of speaking of actually paying, as you just mentioned, this is completely random. I, I actually want to ask you because I always feel guilty doing this. Do you know when you f- fly, obviously, and um, no doubt uh, you've not only got a Virgin Pass, like the Virgin um, Freaking Flyer, you probably got the Qantas one as well. Mm. I always feel bad when – you see the big lineup for everyone that doesn't have – So you know where I'm going with this because you're going to say, yeah. I don't feel bad. They've got the big no. lineup in, in the normal bit versus the uh, the platinum and the golds and the silvers who just walk past everyone and go straight in. Do you ever feel bad? Hang on. You're saying that I'm not feeling bad about this. I, You know what I do? I just wait for everyone to get on the plane. So I get on at the end. So I actually don't go through the lineup. Like I just sit there, I'll just sit on the chair and wait in the corner until everyone's on the plane. So that's dope by you. You're, you're better than that. You know that I wouldn't do that. No, I'm actually a little surprised because I thought you would have been like, oh, well, I pay for, I pay for the the uh, extra perks. You know, being a business, being a business <laughs> member and whatever it is, just walk straight up to the uh, priority boarding and just go straight on. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry if I offended you, but I thought you would have just been like, oh, I'll pay for it. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's move on. That's you, You've lost me there. How was uh, how was your weekend beside, well, your week since we've last spoken here besides, we won't talk about the game yet because obviously we'll touch on that a bit later, but what'd you get up to? Anything yep. exciting other than that? Uh, no, it was a pretty normal week <laughs> for us. We, um, we trained as normal, had Wednesday off. I didn't do a lot because I felt like I just wanted to really relax and um, get ready, prepare for the game coming up. Um, so mum and dad came over again on Thursday. So spent time with them Thursday night, Friday night, um, leading into the game, which was pretty normal. Uh, had a few people around, you know, here and there and yourself included and Kimmy and, and Georgie. And um, yeah, it was just nice to see everyone. It's funny, mate, because now... Lara and um, my cousin have just gone. They're, they're driving back to, back home. So tonight, Tip is at a sister's house for for dinner, and Kaiser's out for dinner. So it's just me and and Jado. So it's gone from having about eight people in the house to two. Are you quietly qu- just quietly loving it? Oh, it's always nice to get your own space. You know that. I've got the house set up so we can do that. So it's uh yeah, but it is nice. It, it's nice every now and then. No, you're too good. You're too uh, um. No, it's family's family. I was about to say too welcoming, which you are. I mean, it. It uh, if your family has to come up and um, they've got nowhere to say, obviously you're going to get them. And I feel now quite bad saying that you would have. You'd see the priority lane and and you'd uh, <laughs> you'd just be like, ah, oh, I'm too good. I'm walking to the priority. But I'll take you know now. I feel a little bit bad because you just literally had, as you just touched on, your whole family staying in your house, and then you had me and Kim and Georgie coming around. So nothing but love here, mate. Um. But no, it's good. No, it's, a it dog, like it's a dog act. It's a dog act, that for <laughs> you. It sounds like you had a good weekend. I mean, um, uh, we obviously caught up for uh, for Brecky yesterday and I was just about to touch on Georgie. She, uh, as soon as she walked in, she came come running over and was like, Joshy. And then mid, uh, 
mid breakfast, she would always just come over and be like, "Hey, Joshy, can I give you a hug? How uh, <laughs> how how was it seeing Georgie? It was good. Although I did make her cry, I think at one point because she um I can't remember what actually happened. She got embarrassed though. It was funny, and oh, I, I just right. asked her a question. Remember, I was like, because I could sense that she was getting a little bit embarrassed. So I was like, <laughs> "Oh, Georgie, like." Do you want to wear some makeup like me? <laughs> Something random, and she just gave it nothing, and it started bawling her eyes out. Yeah, Funny. it's the old, it's the old embarrassment where she, uh, you probably got, you don't know what to do, so you just start crying. Yeah, sometimes I feel like doing that. You know what it's like when you get, or sometimes when you get secondhand embarrassment from someone else. But uh, we're blabbering on a bit here. Well, um, it's it's good. I'm glad you had a good week. I had a good week too. So we'll move on to uh, on the footy stuff, and I yep. uh, oh, will touch on the other games first. As I said, we um last week. Don't mind our tips and briefing each game, and then we'll get to your game at the end. How did you see? Oh, we'll start off with the Friday night game. How'd you? No, Thursday night. It was Thursday, wasn't it? Yeah, Collingwood. Thursday night. Collingwood, Melbourne. I believe you tipped Melbourne. I tipped Collingwood for what it's worth. So I went uh, four from four, and uh, you went three from four. So I'm just quietly winning in the tipping. Um, yeah, how'd you see that game? It would have been pretty cool for you because. The build up to your game would have been like, oh, this is cool watching this game on TV. Yeah, I must say it's um, and I had I did an interview before the game. I think it was with Triple M, and they asked, you know, what's the build up been like? Is it different in Brisbane compared to Melbourne? And I I said yes because the finals type feeling in Melbourne, you just there's nothing like you can't compare anything to it. Mm. Like it's just mm. everyone, it's buzzing. You know, footy on the MCG, pack crowds, and you. I, we don't really get that sense until you watch a final like we did on Thursday night and straight away from the start, it was on like the heat. It was just an unbelievable game of footy and um, really got, you know, the hair standing but on the, up on the back of your neck and um, hearing the crowd and the emotion and just the, the way that the game unfolded was pretty cool to see that. So that really got the week going. As you mentioned for us, I felt like it um, the next day at the club, we were talking about it, you know, how good was that? How good was this? Um, the game in general, and then how good was finals footy watching it again? So it made us really, really excited. Got me excited, definitely. Um, but yeah, it was a cracking game of football, and I was a bit surprised. I thought in the end the D's probably could have overran them, but um, the Pies held on as they always do, mate. Throughout the last couple of years, yeah, yeah, you're right with the whole build up um, in Melbourne. It's uh, it's there's nothing like yeah. Even when we were in in the 2021 year when we played over in Perth, I mean. Yeah, all the finals thing. Footy, yeah, all the finals was there. It's like nothing like being in Melbourne. So I agree, totally agree with you there. And yeah, with the game itself, it just, you know, Melbourne, had, I think they had something like 30 more inside 50s. Like they had their chances to mm. to uh, to win the game and, and, you know, give themselves a chance to win. But yeah, it just looked like Collingwood from the get-go were switched on. I mean, that kind of, um, their, their brand, well, all eight teams are qualified, the brand clearly stacks up. But their brand, I feel like, is, you know, truly stacks up in finals footy. They're pressure type, get the ball going forward. Um, you know, you and I were talking about it yesterday, just footy talk in general about it. And, yeah, I was not surprised that they came out with that intent because, you know, prior to the finals, 24 rounds are irrelevant. I mean, it starts again with finals footy for them. And people were talking about, you know, whether they're on the slide, this and that. But, whoa, mate, they are in... Absolute prime position now to uh, to qualify for a granny getting another home final. So very daunting for either Port or the Giants. Is it? Yeah, Port or Giants yep. to um, play them, which would be uh, interesting. Um, I I do have to ask you because you're you're a uh, you're you just answer things better than what I do. I reckon. I just want to know what your thoughts are with the uh, Braden Maynard, um, you know, stuff that's happening. Or oh, that happened on the weekend. Yeah, I've I don't know. My opinions changed, chopped and changed a lot. Initially, first seeing it, you know, I thought it was a, and similar to what the commentator said at the time, like it was a footy act. I suppose you could call it. Um, but I don't know. The more and more you see it, and I'm not really taking into account the what's happened to Brayshaw and you know all that kind of stuff. But the more and more I see it, I'm like. Well, I think about could he have um, controlled the situation better? Like he sort of brings his elbow in to protect himself or like, you know, to bump, it looks like to bump or potentially bump. Um, whether or not, because I put myself in that position, I'm like, oh, would you, would I 
do that or would I just like hug him, like go to mm. hug him or just like fall on him because you know you're going to give away a free kick. You're in the air. You're probably going to give away a free kick. So do you just like, do you know what I mean? Like just fall on him like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then not then you, then he potentially doesn't get knocked out. I don't know. But yeah, I've got a bit of a mixed opinion on it. He's um he is a very physical player, bros. So um whether that hurts him or not, I don't know. I think it's still happening now, the the tribunal. So we'll see what happens. But that's kind of my do you know what I mean? That's kind of my yeah. outlook on it. I feel like potentially if he had have made a different decision in the air, which is a split decision and he could have just given away a free kick and not knocked him out. I'm not saying he, int- he intentionally knocked him out, but that's just what I I feel like he probably could have avoided the the situation. No, I feel like you nailed that. Yeah, it's um, it is a very hard one because you know your heart goes out to obviously Angus Brayshaw, who has obviously dealt mm-hmm. with concussion issues, and mate, you never want to see anyone get hurt. And the fact that you know he wasn't like it wasn't just the concussion; he was from. Re- Ports is he was unconscious, you know what I mean? So, yeah, um, they said two yeah, minutes. Yeah, so your heart just totally goes out to him, and um, I'm hoping that he can, you know, if the if Melbourne do obviously win this week, get an opportunity for him to get back and play because it's um a damn shame. But yeah, there's a bit to play out there. But I feel like you answered that. Um, yeah, pretty pretty good. Like it's it's an interesting one. I mean, it's yeah, you know, Bruzzy such a, you know, having played with him, he is one of the best guys that you ever want to have in your team. And, um, you know, I, I, I could hand on heart say that he would never go out of his way to try and hurt someone. I just know the mm. person that he is. He's one of the most loving and caring human beings that you could meet. And, you know, there's not one bit of him, even though he plays with that much aggression, there's not one bit of him that wants him to intentionally hurt someone. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a hard one. And as I said, I just feel for Angus Brayshaw because you've got to think about you know his situation and obviously what he's going through, him and his family. So hopefully, uh, hopefully he recovers quick. And um, if they do make a next final, that he can uh, play in that one. Um, the Friday game that was I'm getting mixed here. What was the Friday game? Swans Carlton. Yes. Yeah. Run us through that one. Uh, similar kind of story. I felt like Sydney in the end probably could have come over the top. They made a late charge, but the Blues. Yeah, they held on. I thought they played really good footy in the first, you know, three and a bit quarters. Um, put themselves in a spot to obviously win in the end. But um, yeah, it, it looked like they uh, they just sort of slowed down a little bit towards the end and, and mm. didn't play the way that they were playing earlier on in the game. So I don't know. It was a, it was a good good result for the Blues fans. I'm sure there would have been, you know, out of the Ninety thousand that were there. There was probably eighty five thousand <laughs> Carlton fans and about five thousand Sydney fans. But it was another good watch. I thought it was awesome, uh, an awesome contest around the footy, a contested ball, and then on the outside, like guys like Errol Goulden for the Swans. I thought he was he was really good and instrumental in bringing them back. And um, McLean as well up forward for Sydney was really good. I thought he uh, had one of the best games that I've ever seen him play. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Errol Gordon, I think his stocks just keep rising. He's now, in my opinion, a top 15, probably top 10 player on the right on the border. His ability to, you know, just <laughs> just be so involved all the time. I mean, you know, he's, he's he's just gone from strength to strength. He's a cool player to watch. Same as, as you said, McLean. He was probably his best game. Um, I think I, I, you know, I feel like it's a reflection of both sides. You know, Sydney's a team that never gives up and, they clearly didn't right to the very end and they were right in it. I mean, that, you mm. know, there was obviously a lot coming out of that game with the, um, yeah, that's another question I wanted to ask you. What do you think of the score review system? Do you think, like, what, what's your, we, I don't think we've ever spoken about, oh, we have a bit with the um, Adelaide game where obviously Ben Keys kicked that goal and wasn't allowed. But there's just always so much controversy. Like, like where are you sitting on it with everything? How can we make it better? No, I think, I was a bit confused out of that game because I thought that the it was pretty clear that it was touched. Like that Blake Akers touched the ball twice and you could see it. Like I could see it sitting back on TV. So I don't know the controversy. I didn't really know if it was there. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it's been there throughout the year. Like the, the last time Melbourne played Carlton, there was that, that touch on the line That's that right, potentially yes. might not have been touched. That one was a bit – that's controversial and obviously the Adelaide one as well. But I don't know. I think they do their best. Like you can only 
ask for the best and and if they're that's that, that's what they're giving us so um for me it probably is down to potentially getting a chip in the ball or something i don't know there's got to be some kind of way with technology these days to really 100 percent know but you think of, like i always think about back in the old days right like they would have had so many of these calls that were just oh. they just they made calls based on whatever they thought and yep. at the end of the day that's pretty much what we're doing with the score review system we're just making calls based on whatever the review system tells us so yeah if it's umpire's call it's umpire's call we move on yeah pretty simple way to put it i uh, i agree with you that's a, another thing that's uh is is great now this time of year now that we've really been able to see because i know it, i don't, don't remember the last time carlton made the finals i think it might have been 215 or something but their fans are as loud and as proud as the Collingwood fans and the Richmond fans and these fans where they pack out their games. I mean, they, they had 92,000 at this game on the weekend. And as you said, it probably would have majority been Carlton fans. And now they're playing against Melbourne, another big Victorian club, probably 90, 90 plus thousand. I think it's great for the game of footy. But um, I always think back to the time when you and me on the episode where we spoke about <laughs> Carlton and, you know, just stick with them. Yeah. Yeah, we literally told the fans to stick with them and uh, here they are playing in the semi-final against the Melbourne Footy Club. Oh, it's funny because I always think when we talk about Carlton fans, I always think about Iran, our barber. I always think oh, how how happy or how oh, mate, frustrated he's moon. been over the years, but yeah, then how happy he is now. He's he's always messaging me and um, saying how good they're going and stuff. So, nah, it's good. And But yeah, we did. We said stick with them and now look at them. Going well. Yeah. Yep, they are. And Iran actually asked for grand final tickets probably or six, seven weeks ago. So uh, <laughs> I've, hel- I've helped him out. But um, no, Iran, Iran, one of our great friends. We're giving him another shout out, Iran. But um, move on to uh, the next game. I'm not sure if you were able to watch any of it or maybe a little bit of it, but the St. Kilda Giants game. Um, you know, I-, I said prior to last week previewing the game that the Giants are the team that are uh, like the – team in my opinion outside of the top four that can can really like create some havoc and they were definitely able to show that on the weekend and um, I think it's 11 or 12 venues or something that they've won out this year that's a record for them they're playing you know their brand of footy really stacks up at finals footy level and they've got quality across the field and um, you know to me it felt like from the start of the second onwards Giants were just able to control it and Second quarter, that is, um, able to control the game and just didn't look like giving that up. Even when St Kilda had some late runs, it just looked like Carl, uh, GWS still had control of the game and, um, you know, they just really stood up when it mattered. And yeah, they're an impressive team. I mean, it's going to be a great contest against Port this week. And, um, and then if they are able to get through, if they were to play you guys up at the Gabba, I mean, it'd be unbelievable. So I feel like, uh, you know, they've just impressed me even more over the weekend. Yeah, they won't play us. I think they play it. If they beat Paul, they play oh, yes, the Pies. Yes. Sorry, sorry. Um, but no, you're right. I watched. I think I watched about a quarter and a half of that because that was straight on after the um, after our VFL boys Kaiser and the boys um beat Werribee. So I uh, sorry, not Werribee. Uh, Williamstown. They've got Werribee this week in the prelim final. But um, yeah, it was good. It was good to watch a little bit of that because um, potentially, yeah, we were going to play against them if we had a lost. So that was nice to watch the Giants and the Saints do battle early on. I thought, yeah, their ball movement and the way that they've been able to link up, I think their small forwards have gone really well for them. Like Toby Bedford's mm-hmm. been a big one for me that's been a huge barometer in what they're doing. Um, coming from Melbourne, a successful Melbourne club um, in the Melbourne Demons and going to Giants. And I think he's really starting to you know stamp his authority on that group and and help them be the team that they want to be because there's a lot of role players within that and then they've got their star players as well. So, uh, yeah, good to see them going well and I think it's going to be a great matchup this week with Port Adelaide over there. Yeah, you're, you're totally right with their small forwards. I mean, it's now made me think Dan, Daniels is probably one of the most underrated small forwards yeah. in the competition. His ability to get up and down the ground, but then when he gets the ball, he still has speed in his legs and that's what separates him where he's able to get away from the contest and really create with his legs. So, yeah, mate, they look uh, they look unbelievable. Um, can't wait to watch their game this week. Um, now your game, mate. Uh, it was a uh, I'll just give my thoughts before you do. Um, 
you know, I, I not that I like. I get nervous when I, in general, watching you play because I want you to win. You know, I always want you to win, and I'm supporting you. And I was pretty nervous coming into this game because, like, in my opinion, I think Port, uh, you know, they were probably my pick. Oh, I think Collingwood and Brisbane. I mean, the obvious answers prior to last week, but I felt like Port were probably the next in line, and that's all due respect to Melbourne and the teams. But you know, the way they've been able to play away from home as well, they've been really good. Um, so I was a little bit nervous going into the game, and uh, yeah, halfway through the well, half time the game was pretty close. They were able to come back, and and Connor Rosie kicked that goal that put him in front, and um, it was a bit neck and neck, and you just didn't know what you were gonna. You know, I just didn't know what was going to happen because I've seen, you know, games where, and I reckon you'd say this as well, where teams have been able to score a couple on your peg back a margin and not that you go and lose, but you just stay tight within the game for the rest of the game. But yeah, ha- I felt like halftime was a really good opportunity for you guys to have a good, you know, break and reassess. I mean, you can touch on what you spoke about, but then after the halftime, it just looked like two totally different teams and whether that was building off the momentum in the um, crowd or whatever it was, but well, you came out with an edge and the way you were able to, I guess, get over their defense around the middle of the ground and then just literally slingshot and kick goals out the back and just really hurt and was extremely impressive. And, you know, if it wasn't for Collingwood going so well and being obviously a Victorian team, I feel like you guys would be spoken about, you know, I know you already are as the, one of the premiership favourites, but the out-and-out premiership favourite if you were obviously playing in Victoria. So that was my little view of it. Um, My nerves went away, you know, 10 minutes into the third, which is great because I could sit back and watch (laughs) and enjoy and have a beer and and just watch you go about your thing. Um, So it was a great win for you. How did you see it? What did you think? What did you do at halftime? Because clearly did something better where you came out and obviously ran over top of them. Yeah, I mean, we always, as I talked about it, uh, last week, expected their best from Port, and Port have been a, a formidable side this year, as you mentioned. Um, I felt like we we started the game quite well. Uh, it was a bit of a not a not a focus focus, but like a little bit of a thing at home. You know, you always want to start well in front of your crowd, um, get them involved because the gab is awesome, and you experienced it on the weekend when it's rocking, it's rocking, mate. It's it's unbelievable. So um, that was pretty cool to be able to get it going early on and. Yeah, they, they came back at us. I thought around the ball, we probably um, dropped off a little bit, you know, because they started coming out the front of stoppages and um, getting us on the outside. So we, we tried to, coming into half time. we sort of wanted to really fix that up um, and not allow them to do that because we know that that's one of their strengths with, you know, Rosie, Butters, even, um, you know, Drew and, and Wines. They all like to get the ball on the outside and, and really hurt you moving forward and, when their small forwards can get involved and get it in deep to their talls, they're pretty hard to stop. So um, that was a big thing at halftime was mainly just to win it at the source because they were getting us. I think they got us in the second quarter uh, convincingly, you know, clearance and contested footy and those types of things. So to fix that up in the third was really promising. And then, yeah, as you mentioned, we sort of got on a bit of a roll and got the crowd involved again. And um, some of our boys were ultra impressive you know cam rayner i thought was awesome joey danaher up forward and even eric like i thought eric played a really good role in the night in terms of bringing the ball to ground and and converting when he had his opportunities but um i thought across the board you know huey mccluggage one of the best games i've seen him play um across the board it was really even contribution so it's good to have a win like that and um yeah hopefully that holds us in good stead heading into a prelim in a couple of weeks time yeah, I felt like you. Um, yeah, definitely felt like you were. You nailed that on the head with the even contribution across the ground. Um, you mentioned Huey, his class when he got the ball with inside seventy to eighty he was just a standout. His ability to be able to hit someone coming up at him or whoever it was was one of the best that I'd I'd seen. And, and then you forget yeah. it, you forget about guys like Dane Zorko because he's been around for so long, but the quality that he is and the involvements that he has, the way he's able to cut up opposition. And, you know, I, I watched Lockie Neal closely as well, and he was clearly getting followed by um, William Drew all night. And credit to Drew, I know, clearly felt like he had a, an enormous impact on Neil in the first half. Felt like Neil was able to, um, you know, obviously get a little bit more involved offensively. But I, I seen a comment by 
uh, your coach Fags about that. Um, I forgot what the, what the exact comment was, but I really liked it because people always talk about when Lockie Neal gets tagged and t- players do well against him. They always seem to mention it, but in the in the um, comment that Fags made, it was pretty much you know. But when he does get tagged as well and plays unbelievably well, it never really gets mentioned. And I watched yeah. that. Yeah, I watched that closely and. You know, it was a hard tag. It was a real hard tag. One of those tags where, you know, nowadays there's not many hard tags. It's more of a pseudo tag where you go to him at stoppage or whatever and you run away from it. Um, I feel like his ability to work with you, you know, I watched him, you know, you were coming over to block for him. I watched him closely do things where he helped his teammates teammates out quite a bit around the ball. Real selfless kind of game for Lockie. It was unbelievable to watch. And, you know, you talk about even contribution across the field, not only just with ball in hand, but even with guys like Lockie helping at stoppage. Um, Eric Hipwood, you mentioned, that chase that he had on um, Dersma, I think it might have been yep. in the last maybe where, you know, the game's over. He doesn't have to do that, but he does it. I mean, you must just be building this, ex- well, not building, well, yeah, building, but have built and continuing to build this enormous amount of confidence throughout the group that no matter where, no matter when, no matter what the situation requires, that each player is just going to do what they have to do to help this team win. Yeah, 100%. You hit the nail on the head for sure. I think the way that we've always, you know, inside the four walls, you know, guys get praise out in the media and we can't control that. But inside the four walls, you can always control, can, can control, you know, the types of messages you want to send to the group and the players. And um, that's one of them. And all it is is pretty much just playing your role. And when you do that, you get rewarded, you know, inside the four walls. We get We get around everyone at the footy club. For doing those little things, you mentioned Lockie. You know, he. I thought he was great. You know, he did. Mm. He came up to me during the game, and he's like, "I just can't get free. I just can't get free." And I was like, "Well, I'm help, I'm going to try and help you for sure." Um, but he's like, "Well, I don't care if I don't get a touch. Like, I just want to win this thing. I just want to win." So that's what it's all about, mate. Like the, as you said, you just want to win games of football and whatever it takes to get there and do that is what the boys do and. Um, I've felt that definitely uh, within this group and um, yeah, hopefully that holds us in good stead, uh, you know, in the future. But um, yeah, for the rest of this season, fingers crossed. Yeah. What did Fake say to you after the game? What was his messaging without obviously being too in depth, but what was his, you know, what, what did he say? Oh, uh, he was more, it was, he was positive. I mean, we, um, we obviously set out to play the way we wanted to and all, I think apart from that second quarter patch where they kicked a couple of goals, we played, you know, the game was on our terms. So that's the, that's the main thing. And um, coming out of it, we, uh, we felt like we, we played pretty well. Um, even though we, I think we lost stoppages by about three and contested footy maybe by two. But um, every time they got the ball, they were under pressure. Our, our, our forwards were, you know, putting pressure. Our mid, everyone, our backs really played well and a, a really strong game. So across the board, as I said before, it was really even contribution. He mentioned that, um, Faze did. So, uh, yeah, it was it was one of those performances where you you take it, you bank it, and you now look forward to what's to come. And um, we're fortunate we get a week off this week. A lot, of, And uh, people talk about the week off, whether it's a, a thing that, you know, is good or bad. I think it's really good for our group because, you know, there's a lot of sore boys and, you come out after, you know, a lot of guys have played a number of or nearly all the games this season. So you come out of a game on the weekend that was really physical against Port and um, we we still train this week as a relatively normal week um, and then have a big session on Saturday, which will emulate a game and then roll into next Saturday uh, or Friday or Saturday for the prelim final. But it was good messaging coming out of it, mate. Um, yeah, just really excited about hopefully what we can do this year. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited for you too. Um what does the – well, you kind of just touched on the week ahead for you with the normal training. What what do you do for the game on the weekend? Do you get together and watch it or is it just more of an individual nah. thing, kind of do what you want? Yeah, it's more individual. I think um, we may get together and watch the VFL boys play on Saturday at midday. Um, but, yeah, we so this week pretty much it's like day on, day off, uh, similar to what it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, train today, which is a Tuesday, train Thursday, and then – big session on Saturday, which will be like game-like. And then next week will just be a normal week. So um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, 
Thursday, Friday into, well, it could be Friday night or Saturday. We're not sure yet. But, um, yeah, it, it's it's nice to be able to have a couple of days off initially and then still get your training done on those big main days. Obviously, play a game on Saturday and then into a normal week next week, which pretty much is like a normal routine anyway for us. So, nice to be able to wind down but still maintain that level of um, fitness, I guess. Yeah, yeah, no, I um, I always find it intriguing when you get the two, you know, when you because I've only think done it twice when you have the buy and then you know play a game and then you have another buy essentially. Well, you do and then play. So you play what that's two games of footy in four weeks. So it always ends up being um pretty interesting. But you know, as a player, you don't take that for granted at all because people might think, oh, you know, you might be lethargic or whatever it is, but it's not you. You. Your body is thanking you. And speaking of body, yeah, you're you're uh, obviously had your battles this year. How is your body feeling post the game? And you know, do you feel feeling better for it? The bye game now, you know, just how's it feeling in general? Yeah, my calf's thanking me for the bye. That's for sure. Um, or oh, sorry, the the not this bye coming up, but last bye. I definitely think that I needed the the break pre finals to get really fine tune my body. Um, so. I felt great on the weekend covering the ground, probably the best I'd felt all year, to be honest. And um, but then coming out of the game, you obviously saw because you get a lot of knocks and mm. you know cut open and things like that that you can't really control. So um, I'm a little bit sore today still, but I'll be fine, mate. I'll get to get to work again on Thursday and then Saturday and then into a normal routine next week. So um, yeah. It, I'm very thankful for, for the buy, to be honest, because and I'm sure a lot of other guys. I know a lot of other guys are are keen to um yeah really fine tune themselves for hopefully what's a massive prelim final for us at home. Yeah, I agree. Speaking of your uh, your head, yeah, well, your knock. What happened to your eye? What actually? Uh, what was the What was the incident? Well, I'm fairly sure it was. I can't remember. I think it was first quarter. Me and Scotty Lysette, he got the ball out of the ruck and. I tackled him and we just knocked heads like bang like that quick. It was happened really quick. And then it was right before the – might have been right after I got um, Horn Francis holding the ball that that moment in the game. And then I was just sort of running away and I just wiped my eye and I was like, oh, it's bleeding. And then because you know when you start when, – when you feel sweat coming down your forehead and you're like, oh, yeah, just wipe it off. I started feeling that but it was coming down my eye so I just like wiped it and I saw that there was blood and – um, a couple of their players were like pointing at me like saying, he's got blood, he's got blood, like get him <laughs> off, get him off. And then they stopped the game for life set. So then they, um, then all the port blokes were like, look at him, look at him. And then I just ran off anyway because I was like, oh, I'm going to get done anyway. So uh, ran off and got the, the Joel Salwood headband, mate, for, for the rest oh, of the game. Take it as a sign of respect, mate. They know you're that good of a player. They don't want you on the field, so they try and, <laughs> they try and get you off. Um no, I I, uh, I did see that moment, and when you came on with the um, with the headband essentially on, it looked like you had a really really high fade, like a runner <laughs> just done a haircut on your down in the uh, <laughs> down on the bench, which was pretty funny. Um, I oh, will we'll move on from um, you know, any, any other footy talk you want to talk about? Nah, nah. Other than this week's games, I, we'll probably touch on that um later on, but. Yeah, it was good. It was a good week. Good. I'm uh, I'm glad. I wanted to um, – I just wanted to – because I felt like we didn't do it enough last week. wanted to give you just a little 20-second bit of love. I feel like uh, the way that you've <laughs> able to um, battle throughout the year and, you know, I definitely feel like you don't uh, get enough credit. And, again, watching you on the weekend, um, I seen the SEN and the – uh, another rating system. I think it was the SCN, another one. They gave you like an a, 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 a plus is obviously the highest and they gave three or four players an A plus and two of them, three of them are Brisbane players, one Port player and, and you were the one below that as an A. And I feel like your game was, because uh, I was going to ask you, how did you see your game? But I just didn't want a boring straight down the line answer. I was going to say, I felt like you clearly defensively were, you know, a standout that tackle you had on Jason Horn Francis, where I feel like ninety nine percent of players probably would have given up on the tackle. You didn't, and you were able to get him. And you said a few choice words, which was pretty funny, because I can't imagine <laughs> what you guys would have been saying to each other. I just felt like it was a great game from you, 
um, individually and one that you should be proud of. And I know everyone here is because when I was sitting in the crowd, the amount of times people come up to me talking about the podcast and about how much love that you don't get externally is why I wanted to give you a quick 20, 30 second spill because you definitely deserve it. And you're, you're the one on this potty that we're celebrating for. Obviously, I'm not playing anymore. You're playing. So we're all barracking for you. I'm barracking extremely hard for you. And everyone on the uh, Ads and Dunks potty and Oz American Aces fans all wanted to give you the love because you definitely don't get it as much as you should. So there's my 30 second spill. I appreciate it, mate. Too kind of you. No, it's uh, to all the fans out there and um, everyone that listens, uh, we need to uh, just keep supporting him and barracking hard for these <laughs> lines. Keep barracking hard for these lines, boys. But um, play by play of the week. I've uh, it's our segment that we do, obviously, and we uh, love uh, we love our friends at Playbook, as we've just mentioned. Um, I won't be able to do any for the next couple of weeks now because I'm going in for surgery tomorrow, um, which uh, which sucks because I've been smashing out my Playbook sessions. But um, my Playbook play of the week, I hope, because we actually haven't spoken off air yet. But I hope it's not the moment. I hope it's not the same moment as yours, which I don't think it will be. Mine's from your game, and oh, um, could be. And my playbook play of the week is what I've just mentioned. I didn't want to. Uh, I wanted to do. I wanted to do. Oh, there's two really, but I'm going to mention your tackle on Jason Orn Francis. If you watch it closely, that's my playbook play of the week because you know he's going to be a gun. You know, as much as uh, you know, he obviously still cops it for the booing and whatnot, but the way that he's able to you know, still perform at a high level. His ability to get in and out of stoppage and use his legs, you know, it's going to be a weapon for years to come. That play where, I don't know if he, if he started on you, but whoever he started on, he got separation, got the ball flushed mm. straight down to him, was able to run. I think he took a bounce. It kind of looked like he you know, looked around and he was clearly, as I said, 99% of people would have given up on the chase, but you didn't and you were able to tackle him. I think you guys went and ended up having a shot on goal or whatever it may be. But that is my play of play of the week. It was just an incredible, incredible defensive moment and all our budding AFL stars should go out there and have a look. It was unbelievable. Mine was from our game as well and I was actually involved. I, I was involved in the play, but uh, I just remember it fondly because I think it was a big moment for us and it was awesome to celebrate after. But it was a center bounce and the ball sort of trickled out and um, I think I was on Connor Rosie or Butters at the center bounce and then, I sort of put a half tackle on and then he gave it to someone else. And then Charlie Cameron squeezed out as a forward and nailed a tackle. But then Cam Rainer got it from the center bounce. And then he gave me a handball and then I gave it back to him and he kicked a 60 meter drop punt, mate, that just went flush straight through the middle. And that was, uh, that was my playbook <laughs> play of the week. I thought that was unbelievable. Like not only the, the craft to be able to, the one, two, and then finish from 60 out. But just the the physical pressure that Chuck put on initially to get the turnover and then finish um, on goal was was awesome. I think that actually put you guys back in front. So yeah, or, might have. Yep. Yeah, you might have just been in front. It was near the um, uh, when Connor Rosie kicked that goal to put him in front. It was around that time. I do remember that. That was a great play and a a really close close second for my playbook player of the week. I just have to mention it was when you use the stadium plays obviously songs and oh, you yeah. guys had just kicked the goal and the stadium was singing along. That's where it was unbelievable. And the song yeah. was still getting sung and you got a center bounce clearance and Charlie Cameron got on the end of it and kicked another one. So he kicked two in a row and his song was just kept repeating around the stadium, which is um, <laughs> country road, take me home. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was a close second, but I, I feel like your tackle was uh, definitely number one for me. Um, but yeah, thanks to our friends as always, Playbook, uh, for looking after us and our Playbook Play of the Weeks. Uh, we'll move on to uh, the games this week and then we'll finish with some questions that we weren't able to answer last week because um, yep. I promised that we would. Uh, the Friday night game, Carlton Melbourne, I think. Is that Friday? Yep. yep. Yes. What, what's your thoughts? Because you watch this one closely, obviously. Yeah, watch it very closely. I think it's going to be a good game. The weather, I think, in Melbourne is really good, so there should be no... Um, what do you call it? Like excuses or for any kind of result. I think the best team will win on the night. That's for sure. And I'm I'm really looking forward to watching. And I'm sure the crowd's going to turn up again. Um, both really proud football clubs. 
have heard a little bit that uh, that the D's, you know, Max Gorn might have a sort a broken toe, and uh, Clary might have a crook knee or something. So that whether that plays a part, I'm not too sure. But I think it's going to be a cracking game of footy. My tip, um, I don't know. I'm kind of like, I kind of feel like there could be an upset. I kind of feel like the Blues may get over the line. They did a few, well, through that score review that we were talking about earlier. I don't know. I just got a feeling that the Blues might might get over the line. What about you? Um, yeah, well, I think I think Melbourne will win. My tip's Melbourne. I'm confident in saying that. I feel like they didn't obviously didn't win last week, but they still, you know, they still dominated a lot of areas and with a bit of luck and, you know, not taking any credit away from Collingwood, they clearly won and they were able to defend extremely well. The reason why they're mm. in the prelim, but they still played good enough to win. And as I said, they were very unlucky not to win with just, you know, tidying up a bit of their ball use going inside 50 especially. You know, I feel like you know, it's something that they will rue because they know that if they were to win, obviously it would have been a prelim and they were able to do it against the team that's been the best all year. So I feel like they'll take a lot of confidence in the fact that they were still able to dominate a lot of areas and take that into this game. Um, yeah. It wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if Carlton came out and won. You know, there's no wouldn't be surprises at all. But I just feel like the way they were able to dominate some areas last week, Melbourne, is going to take him into this game. And yeah, I feel like it's going to be a cracking game. And as you said, the weather's beautiful this week. So cannot wait to see out on the turnout. Can't wait to see. You know, I feel like it, um, there's a lot of de- defensive plays in finals footy, but it could be a really high-scoring game. I hope it is. It'd be a great spectacle to watch. But my tip's Melbourne and yours is Carlton. So that could uh, that could be the the breaker for us in the uh, in the tipping comp because that could put me up by two or could equal it. So um, it's an interesting one. Um, the next game, obviously, is it Saturday night or Saturday Arvo? I think it's Saturday night. Night. Giants, uh, Port Adelaide over in... Adelaide, what's your uh, what's your thoughts and predictions? Well, I think Port will uh, bounce back. I, I I don't know. Everyone's talking about Giants and how well they're playing, and statistically and all that kind of stuff. They look really good. Um, I just I just know what it's like playing against Port Adelaide over in at Adelaide Oval, and I feel like their fans and just the way they build it up, and I'm sure they'll be disappointed in their loss to us this week, um, and they'll want to make amends. And I just feel like they're gonna come out and uh, play the best footy that they've played all year. And um, and I, I, I don't know, I feel like they're going to win convincingly. When I say convincingly, I think by, you know, five or five goals or so. Yeah, I uh, I tend to agree with you there. I feel like, you know, Port getting their, you know, if this was, if this wasn't, if this was played on a mutual ground, you know, I feel like it, um, a lot of me would probably say the Giants and, you know, they've had an incredible run and they still are my mm. team that if they were to win, it wouldn't surprise me either. But the fact that it's played over in Adelaide, they're going to have all the momentum with the crowd. And as you said, it's very daunting playing against Port over there. You know that they're going to be up and about for it. Um, and, you know, they'll want to rectify what's been obviously a really tough game for them against you guys. I feel like they'll, um, you know, I tend to agree with you. So, for our Giants listeners, sorry if uh, if you're disappointed in that. Um, but yeah, I think Port will just be a little bit too strong. So we'll look forward to uh, watching that game as well. It's going to be another cracker and, um, you know, I, uh, I can't wait to watch both games. Yeah, me too, mate. Looking forward to it on the weekend. Any more footy talk? Is there anything else before? Oh, no, actually, just before the questions, a little two-minute spill on our fantasy, mate, on our fantasy football, which is what we've been waiting for for a very, very, very long time. We're uh, we're obviously in, on the Oz American Aces League that we love, and we live draft last week, which was great. We were the number one pick. Took Justin Jefferson, Chris Olave, all these stars, Josh Allen. We only snuck over the line. Um, you know, I'll take Just. it. Very, yes, I'll take it as a positive because we have so much room for improvement. Um, Dallas Goda gave us a big fat donut, a big zero, <laughs> and Josh Allen did everything he could to cost us the game. He played. Terribly, absolutely terribly, but we were able to get over the line, which is all that matters is getting wins on the line. So 
I was pumped about that win. How was uh, how was your fantasy week? My fantasy week was pretty good. Obviously, our one you just mentioned, but I think I'm in five leagues and I had uh, oh, I won two. I was versus Libba in the dogs one that I'm in with you. You're in that too. Uh, and Liver, mate, Liver's defense. He had the Jets defense today, and I had um, who did I have today? I think I had the kicker, maybe. Oh, Tyler Bass. All the Jets. Tyler Bass. Greg, Greg the leg. Uh, no, no, no. I had. I think I had the kicker, Tyler Bass. Let me just quickly pull it up because it's part of my story. But anyway, I was messaging Liver, and um, yeah, he was he was that nervous. Sorry. You know what it was that we had? I didn't have the kicker. I had Brees Hall and he had Delvin Cook. So, we, oh, so it was like right. running back v running back. And then he had the Jets defense as well. So I was up all day because Brees Hall was really good. Oh, dominated. And and then right at the end when um, Josh Allen couldn't make that pass, like that, that sort of last little bit. Yeah, that was when I lost it right at the end of the game. He beat me. He ended up beating me by four because his defense has scored 20. Like, oh, frust- wow. It frustrates you, doesn't it, fantasy football? And I got the best running back because Brees Hall had a better game than Delvin Cook. So I was just a bit spewing with that one. Speaking on defense, what about the Dallas Cowboys? Dropping 40 yeah, in fantasy, were- which is incredible. Yeah, that was that was probably one of the worst games the NFL I've watched in a long time. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> Um, but no, it was a. Uh, it's. I'm just glad it's back. I got up at three o'clock on the Monday and watched the game. And Kim wasn't happy with me because I was, uh, you know, running on the treaty, getting some, uh, getting some uh, K's in the legs. And three o'clock in the morning, she's obviously upstairs hearing it, and she she snapped me saying, "How it was? It was just obviously a black black uh, screen because there was no light." Saying how good fantasy football is back with the rolling eyes, and it was just like. <laughs> A video of the noise of the treadmill. So, oh, poor Kibby has to deal with me in my fantasy. But no, I uh, love that it's back. Um, yeah. Yeah. As I said, you don't have any any more footy stuff you want to talk about or we'll move on to our questions? Nah, let's move on to the questions. We uh, we stuffed it up last week because, well, I stuffed it up because of my internet. But, mate, I've actually gone out and my internet should be humming tonight. And I'll check with Brado before we got on because I've gone out and got myself the – Telstra Wi-Fi booster, and I've got it right behind the computer, so it should be crystal clear for you, and crystal clear for everyone else. And you. <laughs> it hasn't hasn't been any blurriness or anything, and it's funny because when we talk here for our listeners and our viewers who are actually watching us, when we talk, we actually watch each other on the screen, and when I know something, well, when you know and I know, it just will stop, and. Yeah, you make the funniest faces, mate. Last week it stopped on you making this funny face, and I was talking for about <laughs> thirty seconds, and you still had that look, and I was like, "Oh, yep, the internet's no good." But uh, <laughs> <laughs> quite funny. Oh, Brad, I just sent oh. a funny chat. <laughs> what um, did he say? Oh, he just sent a funny photo into our chat, but uh, I won't be, I won't be showing that. But um, questions, questions. So I have one for you. Uh, this is from Adele. <laughs> Underscore Smith, uh, greatest on-field moment you've witnessed? Something unbelievable. Whoa. Uh, a moment for a moment. me. Greatest on-field moment was probably when Tommy Boyd kicked that goal in the 2016 Grand Final. That was probably one of the best moments I've seen, and it was obviously started off by um, the Dale Morris tackle into yes. the Tom Boyd goal. So that was a passage of play. That I was involved in, I was right there and just got the front seat. It was unbelievable. I do remember that's a great moment. Um, oh, I actually had a really good think about this, and I always think about moments. And the way I was deciding was how it made me feel. And and I mean, you know, moments give you you know tingles down your spine, all those cliches. But this really did, and it was the first goal in the grand final, two thousand eighteen, when. Travi Varco, one of our um, one of our uh, well, my ex teammates who absolutely love and admire so much, he kicked the first goal for us. Um, and the reason why it was so special is going into um, the final series, he tra- his sister tragically passed away, and it was um, known quite publicly. And he'd faced a lot of um, challenges going into that final series, and you know. He was just an incredible teammate, an incredible person to be around. And I just felt like there was no more fitting moment than for him to kick the opening goal in that game. And the way he kicked it was just incredible. And I just remember 
I was on um, I was on the bench at the time and I was about to come on and I just remember when it happened I just had the biggest goosebumps so um, that was uh, that's probably the number one moment that stands out to me and, and another incredible moment from a different point of view where it's just been like a, a, a feat like a unbelievable mark or goal I have to mention was Jeremy Howe's mark of the year that wasn't mark of the year you know the one where everyone yeah. thought he was going to win it and didn't win it um, I was right underneath him so I was next to Nathan Jones and we both looked at each other like whoa did that just happen but yeah I was right there when he took it and mate I was literally looking up like that's how high he got up so um, that was a, a feat that was incredible but in terms of moments for me where how it made me feel was definitely the Travi Varco goal like it, like it. Uh, I've got a question here from Brooks Blooms. Um, should they bring back State of Origin? What do you think? For oh yeah, <coughs> mate. I just saw the NRL for a second. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, hundred percent. When would you play it? Uh, I, I don't think throughout the year. I think, I think it could be something that could be played in the preseason. I feel like mm. maybe. You know, after Christmas, like, you know, you know when we did it around the time with obviously the bushfire appeal that we had in 2020 and there was that Vic V All-Stars game. I really liked that time because guys are you been, have been training and, you know, they're still reasonably fit. They're about to build up for a season and it's probably going to be a little bit more heat in the game in terms of you representing it. It's not, it's not going to be like an All-Star game, like where there's no tackling and whatnot. Um, mm. I kind of think around that time period, yeah, I would – you know, me personally, I'd love it. I'd love to see State of Origin. Yeah, I'd love to see it too. I just don't know when. Like, I kind of, I love the idea of the NRL and how they do it with the, you know, Queensland, New South Wales, and it's like halfway through the year. I I think it's cool like that. And But the reason, I don't know why we wouldn't do that in the AFL because the, I don't know, because you're worried about getting injured for your actual team to then potentially play finals and things like that. But, I think if it's a if it's a given, say it's like there's like a four week block in the middle of the season where it's broken up and you play state of origin. I don't know, don't know, but I think it definitely should be a thing. Yeah, I, I agree too, and I feel like a lot of fans would love it. It's a hard one because it'd be when would you schedule it? Because coaches, you know, would absolutely hate it being scheduled mid year in case it. someone gets injured. Yeah, and it's all the best players playing, so um, it would be a tough one. Uh this is from uh, – and I'm, the reason why I'm asking this is because I uh, I actually met him for the first time um, when I was out for dinner at uh, Squires Loft, mate. I know you love that joint. Nice steaks there. Um, Good joint. Aussie Rap is the is his uh, Instagram handle. Mate, uh, he came in and he – so he plays for South East Melbourne. He's only 17. He's a, um aspiring uh, star basketballer. And, mate, he walked in and – you know when you see like tall guys, you like just look over. I was like, whoa. And he kind of made a beeline for me in a way, kind of, not really, but like I could see that he was looking over and he just straight away said, oh, mate, I'm a huge fan of the podcast. I love you and Dunks. Can I get a photo? <laughs> and I was like, oh, absolutely, mate. And then I asked him what he does. And anyway, that's how I found out. But anyway, he sent a question in. Uh, did you did you play any other sports? Give me a shout out. I'll be listening. Um, so yeah, did you play? Not I know I know you did, but what was your favorite sport to play outside of footy? Oh, favorite sport? Well, yeah, favorite. Not I your best. All... I, know, I know you're good at badminton and all these other weird sports, but what was your favorite sport to play? <laughs> weird sports. I love it. I love it. Uh, favorite sport? Probably cricket or basketball. One of those two. Choose one. Give me one. Mm, I was no good at basketball, so I'm going to say cricket. And you're good at cricket. Let me tell you, I'll be the first to admit that. Very, very good at cricket. What about you? Yours is basketball. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mine's basketball. Never played it though because the, the question is, did you play? So, no, I never played it because I was always too scared because I wanted to be the best. And if I couldn't be the best, I didn't want to play. So, I don't know why I doubted myself because, mate, I love the game. So, anyway, basketball. You're an automatic free throw shooter. You just on repeat. Yeah, yeah, I am. I am. I love that's all right, mate. You can, just because we're just because we're on air, you not, don't want to pump yourself up. You pump yourself up all the time to me behind closed doors. So just well, well, well. Ste- Steph Martin did say that 
I was the best three pointer he's ever seen shoot the ball when you, me, and him shot the ball. Hey, I, there's no word of a lie. Steph Martin said he's the best three point shooter that he's seen. So, yeah. That was I, just uh, after you told him you were the best three point shooter he's ever seen. <laughs> no, it was not. Uh, mate, you got a question? Yeah, I've got one from uh, Jake McNamara underscore. Mm-hmm. One for you. You can answer this one. What are you thinking when the ball is in congestion post stoppage? I find myself ball watching. What are you thinking when the ball is there and it's like in congestion? What do you think about? That is an unbelievable question. Um, well, it's changed over time. So right now, obviously, it's clearly different. So I'd love to know this. This what was his name? James. I'd love to know how old James was. Jake. And, Jake. 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 Where he is in his career. But when you're young, it's very easy to just ball watch and not really think about the defensive side of footy and don't worry, still get, still sometimes get caught ball watching. We all do because, you know, you just can't help it sometimes. But the quicker you can react, so my answer would be, because there's a, there's a lot going on in my mind at the moment, is how you can impact the play still and it doesn't necessarily have to be by having the ball in your hand if you know what I mean. And I know you know what I mean, but, you know, yep. how can you position yourself to defensively be in a position to either stop them from winning the ball coming back or potentially being in a position to, well, be on the end of, you know, a handball receiver or whatever it may be. That's usually what my thought process is. And as I've gotten older and more experienced and prioritizing defensive stuff a lot more because that's obviously what wins games of footies, my first thought is, is not to run a, an irrelevant pattern. So you always want to be relevant. So, for instance, say, you know, say there's a stoppage on the wing. Uh, you're, at, you're at the direct stoppage. You're f- falling the ground after handballing the ball out. Your team's got the ball and they're, you know, continuing down the wing. I've hopped up. So my running pattern when I was younger would probably be just to track the ball and be in line with the ball. So that's probably staying skinny, not necessarily thinking what you're doing, where nowadays what I'd want to do is probably get up go to the most dangerous position, which nowadays in footy, it's, you know, you don't have to be a genius to know it's directly through the middle. So my, my running pattern is probably tracking towards corridor because I know, oh, I can't directly be involved. If the opposition win the ball back, they're going to want to try and come back through there. So, you know, that's kind of what's going through my mind. I think the more you can react, like what separates you, and you would probably know this better than anyone because you're probably the best two-way runner in the competition is the quicker you can react to that side, the you know, the better or the more opportunity you're gonna find yourself being in a position to impact. So if that helps with the answer, Jake, I hope it does. I like it. Good one, Andy. You got na- another one? I do, I do. This is a good one. I really like this one. This is a really good one. So this is from Ali Jade04. Would you rather be in your prime for three years than retire? Or be average for your whole career, and let's just say your whole career is fifteen years. So, the question is: Would you rather be in your prime for three years, and your prime three years is, you know, I believe for you, you've still got another level that you can go to. But I'm going to use your best year as an example. So, well, we, last year was probably your best year, or what, what? What was your best year last year, or yeah, probably last, last year. year. So you've got three years of last year. In your absolute nah, best, or um, you've got an average career over fifteen. When I say average, you're borderline in and out of the ones, playing ones, getting dropped, playing ones, getting dropped. What would you rather? Uh, oh, um, no, I'm probably taking the the average. You nice. Oh, it's hard. I don't. I just have. I just know that I'd have too much competitiveness and pride to. Be in and out of the team as an average player, so mm. I'd probably take the three years of my prime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you're the same. Yeah. Maybe the same. Yeah, go, mate. All right. Question. Next no. one um, from Cam Misson, twenty three. Best item. Here you go. This is a good question for you. See if you can remember. Best item on the Woody Pub menu. Oh, I had the Palmer there, so. <laughs> That was the only thing that I had there. So I'm going to say the Palmer. Did we have the um, house beer? Did we have the squid? 
Oh, we did, yeah. Did we have a house beer? Is there a house beer there? So maybe just say that. No, no, no. We just had normal beers there. You probably had, um, you don't like beers, so you probably had something else. No, I've changed. I do like, I'm, mat- I'm maturing now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'd well, be the Palmer. The Palmer uh, is very good down there. What's your favorite? Uh, the steak's good and the roast, the roast that they do down there is really good. Um, and then I had, what did I have one time? No, the, uh, the Palmer. The Palmer's probably my go to, to be honest. Yeah, I, uh, Palmer, you can't get wrong, but a really good, it's all about the chips. You know, if you, a, a while ago on this uh, potty, I mentioned the double fried chips where it's extra crispy. I felt like they were really crispy down there. So, yeah, the Palmer would be, um, would be one. I, uh, <laughs> this is from Libba. Oh, yes, yeah, go. <laughs> this is for you. Is, is Jordan Love the next Patrick Mahomes? <laughs> No, he he would want to think so. Being a Packers fan, he's all over the Packers. But uh, no, he's not the next Mahomes. What do you reckon? <laughs> well, mate, after the after the weekend's game that he just had, whew, you never know. He's on the right path. Yeah, he is. He is. What is your what is your pregame meal from Jackson Ablett? Like, what is something you have? I'm not saying in the morning. I'm saying your last meal before a game. Say you're playing it. A night game, Friday night. What are you having? Okay, so it's not a snack. It's a meal, right? It's a meal, yep. Okay, so mine that never changes. So regardless of night game or morning game, or well, morning, sorry, early afternoon, never changes. So my meal is always two ham cheese tomato toasties. So that's my last meal. So every single time, it's ham cheese tomato toasties, sourdough bread. It's always sourdough bread, and it's – reason why there's less ingredients in it is because it's not over filling. Do you know what I mean? I don't like feeling full going into the game because uh, then I just feel heavy. So that's the reason why I have this, the uh, um, ham, cheese, tomato toast is I have two of them. Libba always sees me because Libba laughs at me because I always, I always order them. So that's a little, well, we call it a superstition. Not that I, ever, not that I think it is, but because I I feel like there's so much better cafe style rather than making it at home. Ever since I started yep. having it was probably, oh, it would have been 2000 and I think it was um, COVID year, so 2020. I uh, I started having it then. I literally order it. So even when we play interstate and there's like a full-on buffet, I get um, Uber Eats. And anytime Lib is down in the, in the lobby or something, he knows who it's come for. So he always laughs at me. But yeah, always uh, ham, cheese, tomato, toasties. What about you? Uh I don't have a set thing that I have. I just like to have like a – if it's a night game, I'll have a salad sandwich, chicken salad sandwich. Uh, there's a few good sandwich bars around where I live actually um, that have different sandwiches. So I just sort of go around to those few and change it up Try most on. weeks. So You do love your sandwiches. Uh, I reckon I've got two more for you, all right? This is from Alicia.Denham. Which senior player took you under their wing? When I first started? Ah, uh, geez, when I first started. Um, oh, well, one of the guys that I actually ended up taking over his number at the Bulldogs was um, Matty Boyd. He was big for me coming into the system. And another one, their close mates, uh, Dale Morris, and I get to work with Moz these days at the Lions because he's a development coach there and um, he does an unbelievable job. And I know Boyd, he does a great job over in the West. Um, but yeah, he was one... Both of those guys were massive for me when I first came to the footy club, just around, you know, when I was in and out of the team a little bit and what to do and, you know, who to talk to and how to really sort of oversee it and look at things. I think those two guys really helped me um, prepare, but then also, you know, manage the disappointment of not getting picked, but then channeling that into playing well and consistent footy at VFL level to then get picked. And uh, I felt like when I did come into the team, you know, in the back half of that season, obviously played through to the grand final. So that definitely helped me, um, yeah, in my initial stages of my my youth uh, being a young AFL player. Yeah, that's good. I um I seen Moz actually on the weekend, which was nice to run into him because he's, uh, he's an absolute gun, someone that Brisbane are very lucky to have working because I feel like he's a great teacher of the game. So it's a good answer, mate. Actually, I, want to, uh, I wanted to – I just – this is so this is from the same person, Alicia – Dot Denim, I've got to ask you because this is a good one. 
Uh, so this is my. This will be my last one. Does your jumper number have any significance? Uh, number five for me. No, not really. Not really. At the Bulldogs, it the reason I moved from twenty to five was I just felt like I I needed a change and I was a bit you know stale and um I'd just done my shoulder that year and I felt like I was I was keen for a change and then the number five came up and. <laughs> As I said, Matty Boyd was one of my, you know, idols growing up, and then also took me under his wing when he first came to the footy club. When I first came to the footy club, and I worked really close with Rowan Smith as well as a as a coach. But he just helped me with, you know, I do a lot of things with him development wise when I first got drafted, and both those guys wore the number five. So when the opportunity came up to 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 take that, I was I was grabbing it. I love it, mate. What about you? Oh, yeah. 17 was my first number at the Giants. Um, that was my mum's birthday. So 17 was my, always um, my number of choice. I wore it at the Danong Stingrays. And then, yep. but seven's always been my favorite number. Wore that at Collingwood, obviously. So when I um, came across to the Bulldogs, I didn't, I couldn't get seven or 17. So I just thought, oh, well, one is in 17 and one's there. So it's pretty funny how it works. And now I've worn 17 and one and seven. So, Yes, there is um, there is uh, significance, mate. Did you? So I we have to mention, Brado's just messaged us. Bra- uh, Braden Maynard's free to play. Got off. Has been cleared of rough conduct and is free to play in Collingwood's preliminary final. These huge news. All right, mate. You got anything else for us, or is that it? Nah, mate. Just looking forward to the weekend off. Yeah, well, mate. Me too. I uh, been another great episode for us. Uh, as always, thanks to our uh, our great friends at Oz American Aces and Playbook. It's always uh, it's always uh, nice that they're um, jumped on board, and we mention it all the time. But um, love our friends at Playbook. Uh, great episode, mates. I would say good luck. But you're not playing this week, obviously. So good luck to watching Carlton and uh, Melbourne. I know you'll be watching closely. Have a good week ahead and uh, enjoy, mate. Thanks, mate. Playbook, the place to find a sports coach or mentor. All sports, all ages, all abilities. It's about you playing to your potential, whatever level that is. Visit playbook.coach to find a coach. Playbook is also the place to sign up as a coach if you have sporting expertise and you're keen to share that with others through coaching and mentoring. Everyone is welcome to coach. It's super flexible. You set your own prices, locations, and schedule. Head to playbook.coach to sign up.